Wataru Soju is a rizless loser whose entire personality is to chase after a mid-girl named Eika who continues to reject him. However, all of this changes when a ball headed towards Wataru makes him realize that Eika is truly not worth the hype. Like usual, Wataru is seen pestering Eika on the way to school. Fed up by his constant simping, Eika tells him that she'll get a restraining order against his creepy bum if he doesn't stop. All of a sudden, a football comes flying towards Wataru, but misses his ugly face by a few inches. Seeing this, Eika tells Wataru how even a football wants to avoid him. At that moment, Wataru has a post-nut clarity without the nut as he begins to wonder why he was chasing a below-mid girl after all. With that, Wataru heads to class where Eika's equally ugly best friend Ki tells Wataru to stop acting like a creep. Wataru nods and casually takes his seat which surprises both Aika and Ki. As the teacher enters the class, the first thing she notices is how Wataru is sitting calmly in his chair for once. She voices her amazement by telling Wataru how this is the first time she has seen him not simping over Aika's desk. The entire class laugh and Wataru joins them much to Aika's embarrassment. After class, Wataru steps out in the hallway when Aika loudly tells him to stop stalking her. In response, Wataru tells her that he's just trying to go to the restroom, which shocks both Aika and the onlookers. After walking past Aika like a true Jika Chad, Wataru finds himself surrounded by a group of boys, Yamazaki Takaru. A classmate of his asks Wataru if he's okay since he's not acting like his usual stalker self. Unbothered, Wataru asks Yamazaki if it looks like he likes Aika. Shocked by the question, Yamazaki tells Wataru that he has been in love with Aika since forever. Wataru gives him an uninterested nod and walks back to class. Sometime later, Wataru gets up when Aika curiously asks him where he's going. Wataru tells her that he's going to the cafeteria, which again is a thing to be surprised about. Yamazaki appears and announces how this is the moment where he would pester Aika to have lunch with him. Seeing Yamazaki give an elaborate performance of how he behaves around Aika, Wataru realizes how he has been a total embarrassment to his ancestors so he walks out, leaving his classmates worried and confused by his nonchalant behavior. The boys even offer a prayer for their homeboy, pleading with God to make things right with Wataru. Meanwhile, in the shed, Wataru is greeted by an ugly girl who introduces herself as Rina Aizawa from the class next door. Curious as to why anyone would willingly want to talk to a creep like him, Wataru asks Rina why she's here. In response, Rina giggles and tells Wataru that she'll see him around. With that, she leaves Wataru to contemplate in silence. The next day, Yamazaki practices his WWE moves on Wataru, revealing to him that a girl is here for him. Right then, Rina pops up like a suicidal thought at 3 a.m. and greets Wataru. Recognizing the girl from yesterday, Wataru tries to dismiss her, which makes Rina annoyed. She tells Wataru that he's being unkind to her for no reason, but Wataru retorts that he doesn't get why a girl that's neither blind nor dead would talk to him. Their whole conversation is then interrupted by Eika and Ki, who witness Wataru talking to another girl. After P.E., Ki comes up to Wataru and calls him a cheating womanizer. As Wataru struggles to come up with an answer, K tells him how Rina is famous for being lovey-dovey with her long-term boyfriend, Kazuki. After their conversation, Wataru coincidentally comes across Kazuki, who proudly tells his friends that he would let Eka step on him. Returning to class, Wataru is greeted by Rina when Ki bluntly asks her why she broke up with her ex. Surprised by the sudden question, Rina stammers that they broke up because she has a bad trait. Learning this, Ki assures her that it was good for her to break up with Kazuki. As Ki continues, continues to badmouth her ex, Rina gets upset and tells her to stop. After saying that, she runs off prompting Wataru to chase after her. However, on the run, Wataru bumps into a shy girl who runs away upon seeing his ugly face. Catching up to Rina, Wataru apologizes on behalf of Ki and her big mouth. After accepting the apology, Rina notes how Wataru doesn't talk about Eika when she's around. Wataru tells her that from a romantic standpoint, even a cherry loser like him knows not to talk about another girl in the presence of another. Rina then inquires about his feelings for Aika, causing Wataru to admit that while he likes her, he's tired of getting rejected. The topic gradually shifts and Rina reveals how her boyfriend casually said that Aika is a lot like his type which didn't sit right with her. She also tells Wataru how she's trying to put Kazuki through the same misery but things aren't going according to her plan. Learning this, Wataru discloses how he got brutally rejected in middle school by a girl who called him an ugly mouth breather. If that wasn't bad, her boyfriend appeared and punched the crap out of him. He further tells Rina that as he was running, he bumped into Aika who gave him a slap and that was the moment when he fell for her. Hearing Wataru's pathetic love story, Rina expresses her horror Horror, but Wataru continues by saying how he has decided to just support Aika from afar instead of chasing her. After hearing how brain dead Wataru is, Rina thanks him and runs back to her boyfriend. The next day, Wataru receives an unexpected visitor at home. As Aika expresses her concern over how he hasn't been simping for her lately, Wataru admits that he feels apologetic for troubling her. Their conversation is cut abruptly when Wataru's older sister and the vice president, Keed, comes to annoy Wataru. Later, Wataru tells Aika that he's looking forward to being just classmates, which upsets her. The next 
next day, Kid looks over to her lonely friend and tells Wataru how it's because of him that Eika is without friends. This prompts Wataru to look back on all those moments when he pestered Eika, while his class fellows started having unsolicited opinions on Eika's character. Some would say how if Eika was truly bothered, she wouldn't respond so enthusiastically to him. After realizing that it's all his fault why Eika is kinda emo, Wataru wonders if he should just stay away from Eika so those around her can talk to her. Later, Wataru finds himself lost in thoughts when an ugly girl stops and asks him if he's the creep who scared off his junior. Confused at first, Wataru recalls bumping into a shy girl. After remembering that incident, he bows and apologizes to the girl, but she tells Wataru that he doesn't need to apologize as long as he didn't have any bad intentions. However, as a representative of the simps, Wataru responds that he should apologize for merely breathing the air around someone as innocent as that girl, and the only man that should be talking to her is a seven feet chad from a runway. Hearing this, the girl corrects Wataru, revealing that the girl he's talking about is his senior. After apologizing once again, Wataru turns to leave when Rin stops him again. He turns to face her, when Rin asks him if he knows her. And how can Wataru not know the charismatic chair of the school committee for morals and discipline? As Rin comes to know that Wataru holds her in high regards like all the other simps, she drags him to the student guidance room. Inside, she tells Wataru that the girl he bumped into is Yuyu and Atomi, a diligent, hard-working member of the school committee. Continuing on, Rin reveals how every member of the school committee is as committed as Yuyu, but from time to time they would lose their confidence and become pessimistic. Seizing the opportunity, Wataru tries to riz up his senior by saying that her subordinates are hopeless because they can never be as cool as her. This causes Rin to blush as she tells Wataru to not praise her so much. Returning to the subject, Rin confides to Wataru how every time she tries to give her pathetic juniors a pep talk, they tell her that a person as cool as her can never understand their feelings. Hearing this, Wataru reveals that he can understand her juniors. He also advises her to give her juniors a pat on the back which will be enough. Explaining his previous point, Wataru tells Rin that her juniors wouldn't want her to bend backwards for them, so a simple gesture like a pat on the back should suffice. After getting some good advice, Rin asks Wataru for his name. However, instead of giving his name, he tells Rin that he's Yamazaki. The next day, Akid spots Aika walking in front of them. Knowing that her brother has no game whatsoever, she nudges Wataru to talk to Aika and walks away. In silence, Aika and Wataru reach school and Ki urgently tells Wataru that Rin is pissed. Arriving in class, Rin confronts Waharu for using a false name and tells him to meet her during the break. With that, she walks away, leaving everyone surprised as to why someone like her would associate with Wataru. Later, Rin asks why Wataru lied, and he honestly reveals that he felt like it would be a pain in the butt to be remembered by a committee member, so he decided to use his friend's name who he knows wouldn't mind. This confuses Rin who wonders why Wataru would mind being known by her while there's a student who'd be happy to be recognized by her. Wataru notices the look of understanding on Yuyu's face and urges her to explain things to Rin. Despite sounding like a broken record, Yu tells Rin that the boy Yamazaki would have liked being known by her because he must find her beautiful. This causes Rin to blush as she tells Yu to cut the crap. After solving the matter, Yu thanks Wataru for being kind towards her, but seeing her tweak, Wataru gets the ick. Returning to class, Wataru finds Eika surrounded by a couple of girls, which makes him realize that maybe his stalking tendencies did keep Eika away from making new friends. After seeing Eika happy, Wataru receives a text from Kid, ordering him to come to the student council room. As Wataru heads to the council room, Kid tells him to help her with some administrative stuff. Despite his reluctance, Wataru does his best which surprises the rest of the student council members. Once he's done, Kiti tells Wataru to help her out tomorrow and as reward, she would buy him a plot magazine which will be better than his wet dreams. The next day, Aika's new friends insist on hanging out at her place. As Ki excitedly tells this to Wataru, Aika rudely says that she won't be inviting him. Instead of taking it to heart, Wataru gives her a sad smile and tells her that he already knew that. This makes Aika feel rather bad so she tries to talk to Wataru, but gets interrupted by Rin who borrows Wataru to ask him about his opinion on Yuyu. As Wataru gives his unfiltered opinion on Yuyu, Rin smiles and tells him that he's good at reading people. With the sun out and shining, Wataru enters the class and seeks comfort in the cold air when Ki arrives in her summer uniform. Seeing the girl without her blazer, Wataru's disgusting thoughts take control of him as he tells Ki to not wear indecent clothes in front of her. Of course, being a feminist with bright colored hair, Ki tells Wataru to shed his trap and not objectify her, to which Wataru kindly reminds her that she has nothing to be objectified upon. The topic eventually changes as Wataru asks Key if she went to Aika's place. Before they can talk more about it, their teacher enters the class. Being a slacker, Kei ignores her education and prioritizes scrolling. She goes through her gallery and notices how Aika doesn't look happy in the picture she took. After the class, Kei asks Wataru why he hasn't tried to riz up Aika ever since the class began. Wataru tells her that he's trying to maintain a distance and also mentions how since he stopped being a total creep, Aika has started to make other friends. 
Despite knowing that Aika isn't exactly happy about this new change, Ki decides to bite down her tongue and keeps her opinions to herself. During PE, a classmate approaches Wataru, revealing how Aika's younger sister is a total cutie. The boy then asks Wataru why he was a no-show at Aika's place, to which Wataru candidly reveals that since he wasn't invited, he's not gonna show up unannounced. After saving the pictures on his phone, Wataru comes out as a rat as he tells the classmate that he was tasked by his sister to spy on him. This leaves the poor NPC struggling for words. As Wataru sends the pictures to the NPC's sister, her sister tells Wataru through texts that she will also become a little girl to achieve her brother's love. Wataru eyes the text and realizes that some serious sweet home Alabama shit is going on in his classmate's house. Returning to his class, Wataru receives a back hug from his rainbow flag friend, Yamazaki. After the warm greeting, Yamazaki voices out how it's annoying that their seeing arrangements change, but he tells Wataru how he has recently befriended a fatherless girl named Koga. This surprises Wataru a little as he turns to look at Koga, who happily declares that she'll be letting her boyfriend invade her. Unexpectedly, Yamazaki drags Wataru to Koga's table where all her friends welcome him in. Koga then teasingly asks him if he has given his white sauce to Aika, but Wataru reveals how he doesn't even know her address. Speaking of the witch, Aika arrives like a bad thought and drags Wataru to the music room. Seeing how upset she looks, Wataru tries to wonder just what he did. Aika then stutters and says that she saw her talking to those girls. This surprises Wataru as ever since he has known Aika, she has treated him like a creepy stalker. Curiously, Wataru asks Aika why she cares but this only frustrates her and makes her leave. Having a thing for the crazies, Wataru wonders how a woman can be this cute. Later in class, Kei finds Wataru deep in his thoughts and asks him why he has a weird look on his face to which Wataru reveals that this is just how his face looks. Their conversation is cut short when Renji of the student council committee appears and asks Wataru to come with him. As Wataru follows Yuki, the boy asks him to give him a self-evaluation of himself. Wataru calls himself a commoner and a mouth breather. Hearing this, Renji talks about how he knows that he pinned over a girl for years but now he has changed recently. He asks Wataru why that happened and Wataru reveals that he just didn't want to put in the effort that wasn't needed. Hearing this, Renji asks if his big sister knows this but Wataru says that Ki has no interest in him. This surprises Renji as he says that Kiri is very shocked by his sudden change. He also reveals how Ki told him that she would tell her brother that he's a crappy person, which is why she has started to feel guilty for his lack of enthusiasm in life. Surprised by Ki's unsaved thoughts, Wataru tells Renji that he doesn't know how to respond so Renji announces that he'll make them have a family meeting. As they walk together to talk to Ki, Wataru tells Renji that he knows his sister won't admit her real feelings to him. As the two boys walk in the hallway, Renji rises up all the girls without even trying. Seeing this, Wataru asks Renji if he knows how handsome he is. Without playing humble, Renji says that he does know that, and at one point he was arrogant about it. It was his sister, Ki, who saved him from narcissism. Alone, Wataru heads to the council room. He thinks to himself how he doesn't want to make Ki upset, even though she is the worst big sister anyone could ever ask for. As Wataru appears on the rooftop and finds Ki, he tries to confront her by asking her to reveal 10 good traits about him. This shocks Kade as she wonders why Wataru is asking stupid questions. As Kade fails to do that, Wataru changes the question and asks her to tell him 10 ordinary traits about him. Almost instantly, Kade begins pointing out how ordinary he is. Hearing Kade, Wataru tells her how this is how she truly feels and shouldn't worry about hurting his feelings since she taught him the reality. Kid tells Wataru that she just didn't want him to have a breakdown as she can't pay for his therapist. With that, she tells Wataru that she's going to be mindful of what she says, but Wataru tells her that he likes his crappy big sister better. All of a sudden, Aika grabs Wataru by the collar and tells him to apologize to his sister, but instead of doing so, Wataru asks Aika why she went through all that trouble for him. This makes Aika loosen her grip on his collar and she also questions the reason why she followed a dirty pig like Wataru. Flustered, Aika runs off leaving Wataru confused. However, Kid smiles as she realizes something, but for the sake of furthering the plot, she remains quiet and calls Wataru an idiot. Sitting in a cafe with Aika, Kei asks her why she appears so glum and what prompted her to go after an ugly waste of oxygen like Wataru. Aika struggles to answer but she tries to explain to Ki how when everyone came to her house and her little sister warmed up to everyone, she didn't like that. A smirk appears on Ki's lips as she asks Aika if she is upset. Her sister Eri became friends with everyone but a specific person. Surprised by her friend's quick thinking, Aika admits that this is indeed the case. Ki also notes that it is very unusual how Wataru hadn't been pining over like a hopeless loser anymore and so she can understand why she feels confused and frustrated. However, Aika reveals that she doesn't know why she feels so bothered by this behavior. Being somewhat of an unpaid therapist, Kei tells Aika that maybe deep in her heart she feels like she actually belongs with a pathetic 
apathetic loser like Wataru. Taken aback, Eka denies the allegations, taking that there is no way in hell she would like a stalker like Wataru. Knowing that her mid-bestie has a superiority complex, he tells her that since she doesn't have a father to validate her, she must like the attention she receives from Wataru. Hearing this, Eka struggles to answer but Ki continues by saying that she feels uneasy because she lost her place in Wataru's life. Knowing Ki is on point, Eka tells her that she's amazing. Ki laughs and honestly tells her that there is no telling if Wataru will move on from her or not. She also tells Eka that it is now her turn to make an effort and raise a loser like Wataru. Meanwhile in the Saju household, Kiti tells her ugly brother to dye his hair because two-toned colors make him look even more ugly than he already is. Knowing that his sister has been on periods since birth, Saju calmly tells her that he will eventually get it done. This confuses Kiti a little as she points at how he used to care about his appearance before. In response, Wataru reveals that before he was trying his best to become a man worthy enough for Aika, but since he has entered his self-acceptance era, he is no longer concerned by how he looks. After talking to his lame sister, Wataru heads to school where he respectfully greets Aika. This throws Aika off as she asks Wataru why he's suddenly being so respectful. Wataru replies that it's cause after what happened yesterday, he doesn't know how to function. The topic then changes as Ki tells Wataru to fan them. Without any self-respect for himself or his dead ancestors, Wataru takes out a file and begins to fan the girls like a proper slave. At lunchtime, Wataru finds a perfect seat. He takes it and smiles blissfully as he expresses how he's happy to have gotten his greedy hands on a lot of snacks. However, before he could enjoy his meal, Rin appears and greets him along with the Discipline and Moral Committee. Yuyu especially asks Wataru to join them on their table. Before he can tell Wataru that he's not interested in sitting with ugly girls, Rin forces her to do so. On the cafeteria table, Yuyu tells Wataru that he'll grow obese like certain people from the land of fast food. This shocks Wataru as he wonders how a timid girl like Yuyu is able to talk to him without stuttering like a retard. He asks the girls if she got a boyfriend which upsets Rin and another ugly girl named Aya. Seeing her friend be a total b-word to Wataru, Yuyu tells Aya to smile. As Aya tries to is told like a sheep, Wataru tells her that she doesn't need to force herself, which of course upsets Aya as she kindly reminds him that she's not doing it for him. After lunch, Rin thanks Wataru for helping Yuyu come out of her shell. She reveals that it was after talking to Wataru that Yuyu grew a pair and became more comfortable with men. She also tells Wataru to now have confidence in himself as he is very helpful to those around him. Returning to class, Wataru finds his classmate Sasaki in a pathetic bed estate. He comes to check up on him and finds out that his sister has gone ham on him after he sent her the pictures. Sighing, Sasaki pulls Wataru to a corner and admits that he has hots for Aika. This doesn't upset Wataru. In fact, he tells Sasaki that he understands because Aika is a goddess. Confused by Wataru's loser behavior, Sasaki asks him how he's okay with this. Wataru reveals that it's up to Aika to decide who she wants Wants to be with. After saying that, Wataru tells Sasaki that he'll be treating him as a rival from now on. Understanding Wataru, Sasaki announces his resolve on pursuing Aika. As Wataru sees Sasaki talk to Aika, he realizes that an ugly monster like him should just give up on Aika completely. Seeing Aika hang out with that bastard Sasaki, Wataru sighs sadly. Later, Aika comes up to him and asks him what his relationship is with the school's disciplinary and moral committee. Confused by the question, Wataru honestly reveals that they're just his seniors. After getting the confirmation she needed, Aika tells Wataru to dye his ugly hair. Getting an order from his queen, Wataru gets a hair dye. The next day when results are announced and Wataru finds himself on the loser rank, he realizes that he needs to work really hard if he's competing against that bastard Sasaki. All the pathetic NPCs gather around Aika to ask her if she would like to go somewhere during the summer break. They also express how much they miss her little sister when Sasaki arrives and asks Aika if she will invite Wataru to hang out with them. In the same breath, he also adds how the two haven't been hanging out together. The girls around Aika tell Sasaki that it's because Aika has grown popular so it must have gotten tough for Wataru to be a creep. Wataru, who had been present in the class, steps out mumbling to himself how people have noticed this change in him after all. Returning to class like a loser, Wataru notices a group of girls lurking outside his class. They talk about how Aika is popular, and they can use her. Being a typical white knight, Wataru calls out the girls, loudly asking them what business they have with Aika. The ugly blonde shrieks in surprise, but after calming down, she sassily tells Wataru to not talk to her like this as she's of noble descent. Wataru scoffs at that and mimics her shriek and tells the girl named Marika how ugly she looked. This upsets Marika and her posse so much that they end up leaving. The next morning, Wataru heads to school and bumps his umbrella with Aika unexpectedly. He notes how he's a little cold and walks ahead of her causing Aika to run after him. All of a sudden, Trutkun arrives and makes an attempt to send Aika to another world so she can finally star in a better show when Wataru comes and saves her. In class, Wataru is seen sneezing but his narcissism is immaculate as he notes to himself that he's the definition of drop-dead gorgeous. With a concerning tone, Ki tells Wataru that he looks dead from inside. 
Not wanting her hero to look washed up, Aka hands Wataru her handkerchief, but Sasaki arrives to tell Wataru that he can't wipe off the ugly on his face. Just then, Wataru falls into an unconscious spell. After waking up, he notices that it's already third period. The teacher tries to lecture Wataru on the importance of paying attention, ignoring how the guy practically looks dead. Wataru then excuses himself and tells the teacher to let him use the infirmary since the old hag is dumb and dense enough to not notice herself. However, as Wataru stands to head out, he ends up fainting again. In his unconscious state, Wataru knows how when he started second year, he started faking his personality. He tried to become sarcastic and funny since being a class clown was the only way for him to be loved. One day, Wataru tripped in front of the whole cafeteria. It was then he met Eika as she was the only girl who tried to go help him up. In the present, the nurse tells the girls that Wataru will unfortunately live to see another day and allows them to check up on him. Seeing Wataru sleeping, Eika notes how Wataru isn't that shabby looking. The nurse then tells the girls to run to their classes, causing them to leave. After some time, Wataru wakes up and is greeted by the nurse who tells him that he must be tired because of psychological reasons. In the meantime, Eka grows worried sick for Wataru when she observes a commotion outside the door. Ki's fangirl mode gets activated as she sees Rin in their class. Noticing Ki, Rin tells her that she had business with Wataru, but upon learning from her that he had collapsed, Rin tells her that she would notify Wataru's sister and meet him later. After class, Ki and Eika carry Wataru's bag when Ki teases Eika that Wataru must be carrying magazines featuring women with plots. This makes Eika rather upset because of her lack of you-know-what. However, Ki assures her that flat is justice. Arriving in the infirmary, the girls find Wataru wide awake. However, they notice that Wataru is looking like a depressed teen from a Netflix series. As Eika tries to inquire about his state, Wataru loudly tells her to stay away. However, he quickly composes himself and tells Eika that he doesn't want to spread his sickness to her younger sister. After leaving the infirmary, Ki fangirls over Wataru's changed behavior, stating that he looks so cool. The next day, when Wataru remains absent, Ki and Eika visit his place and tells him to get well soon. After a well-rested break, Wataru regains his health and returns to school. There, he finds Marika telling Eika to support her and become her poster girl when she runs for the position of student council president. However, Wataru bluntly tells Marika that since Eika is superior in looks, she will be upstaged by her. Enraged by Wataru's bluntness, Marika tries to throw a tantrum when her minions remind her that it's best if she leaves for now. Huffing in annoyance, Marika retreats, leaving Wataru confused. Ki then points at how Wataru's sudden comment of him calling Eika cute has caused Eika to go into factory mode. Eika struggles to respond and ends up running like usual. The next day, Wataru heads to the cafeteria where he's called by the group of annoying disciplinary and moral committee. Surprised as to why a group of decent girls would like to invite him to lunch, Wataru heads to their table. Upon taking a seat, Rin tells Wataru that she will be retiring from her position next semester. Continuing on, she states that she wants him to join the committee. Rin also confesses that no boy has signed up for the position as of yet, and she really wants him on the committee. Hearing this, Wataru tries to politely reject the offer, but Rin and the girls insist desperately. Seeing the girls beg him so much, Wataru thinks to himself that he has never been so needed before this event. Yuva joins in and grabs Wataru's hand while causes the loser Cherry Boy to back out in shock. However, he notices the angry looks on Rin and Aya's face, so he tries to grab Yuva's hand. Unfortunately, Wataru only makes the situation worse as the two overprotected girls gang up on him. What happened between Wataru and the girls is a scary secret we will never know. As Wataru returns to the class like a wounded warrior, Aika spots him and asks him why his hair is in such a mess. Wataru thinks back to the moment he was being choked by the girls when Aika suddenly pulls him near herself and tries to fix up his hair for him. This causes Wataru to blush while the onlookers wonder why Aika is hanging out with a loser like Wataru. Wataru calls Aika gently, bringing her back to her senses. Aika blushes as Wataru asks her if she needs money for doing such a nice act, but Aika huffs and tells him that she doesn't need his money. After some time, Wataru and the rest of the student body assemble in the hall where the disciplinary and moral committee holds a session on the dangers of drowning. Wataru observes the speaker, a fatso, and comes to the conclusion that only someone as ugly as him can mingle easily with both boys and girls. Once the fat NPC leaves, Rin takes over, which leads to the entire audience to smile in delight. Observing the onlookers, Wataru notes that Rin is truly the popular queen, so everyone should want to join the committee. After Rin, Renji takes over and once again, the girls fawn over him. Wataru observes how hearing Renji's manly voice even makes him feel fruity. After the lame is hell session, everyone returns to their classes. The teacher asks them who would like to help out with the school visit you during the summer break. 
When no one stands to volunteer, the teacher chooses candidates herself. From the boys, she chooses Tabata and Wataru and asks them to sort the matter out with rock, paper, scissors. Luckily, Wataru loses causing Tabata to volunteer. Next, Eika and a cheap version of Tuka from Tokyo Ghoul duel for the position. As Eika is selected to volunteer, Sasaki being a simp and an opportunist tells Tabata that he'll take over his duty. The entire class erupts in whispers as they try to ship Sasaki and Eika together. They talk about how beautiful their babies would look like which causes Wataru great annoyance. Ki teases Wataru to go after Aika, but he gives up like a loser and tells Ki that he's happy with how things turned out. Upset by this, Ki tries to motivate Wataru who gets up and leaves like a chad. Seeing Wataru lose interest also makes Eka sad. Once the summer break starts, Wataru becomes a hustler and joins a bookshop as a part-timer. Next to his shop, a group of delinquents pick on little kid when Wataru steps in and rescues him. He learns that the little boy is named Koda and he's Seseki's younger brother. After helping him up, Wataru calls his home causing Koda's sister to come for him. Almost instantly, Wataru is bewitched by Fuka and her mommy Aura. He wonders if she's a college student as Fuka calls him a nice young man for saving her brother. The next day, Wataru relieves the moment with Fuka like a loser wanker. All of a sudden, Cade comes out of her room and tells Wataru that she knows he got invited by Rin to join the committee. Knowing her brother is a complete buffin, Cade curiously asks him about the nature of his relationship with Rin. As Wataru honestly reveals that their dynamic is like siblings, Cade shrugs and tells Wataru to join the committee. However, Wataru rejects the idea, stating that he's not ready for the mountain of responsibilities. Hearing this, Kaita tells him to join the student council, revealing that she doesn't want to entrust it to someone who's dumb and blonde. Wataru instantly realizes that she's talking about Morika. After leaving for work, Wataru is greeted by Fuka. During their conversation, Wataru tries to raise up Fuka, and it sort of works as Fuka asks if she can come to his workplace again. With Aika out of the picture for now, Wataru goes to the ocean with mommy Fuka. The two breathe in the salty ocean air as Fuka notes that she really likes the scent of the ocean. She also flirtatiously tells Wataru that this is their special outing. Wataru then pulls out the ugliest handkerchief produced in the history of handkerchiefs and thanks Fuka for her kind gift. Fuka smiles and says that she got a dolphin print because it reminded her of him. Knowing that the hottest chicks usually make no sense, Wataru just nods in response. The day before, as Wataru works in the library, he's greeted by Fuka who tells him that she wanted to stop by the library before heading to campus. Wataru then notices a bracelet on Fuka's hand and compliments her on it. Fuka reveals that she went to get this bracelet with her father which surprises Wataru as he had previously thought Fuka lacks a father figure in her life. Furthermore, he notes how when Kid was in elementary school, she separated her laundry from their father. As Fuka proposed proposes to go to the jewelry shop, Wataru thinks that since Aika's birthday is coming, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go to the shop. In the present, Ki and Aika decide to take a trip to the ocean with Eri. Before heading towards the ocean, Ki decides to make a turn to Wataru's house. She tells Aika that they should invite him, revealing that it'll be nice to treat the loser by showing their bodies. However, after coming to learn that Wataru isn't home, the girls head alone. In the meantime, Wataru and Fuka observe the beautiful ocean before them as Fuka reveals how she went to the beach last year with her family, but couldn't go for a swim as her old swimsuits don't fit her. At first, Wataru tries to ask why but quickly blushes as he realizes that Fuka's plots must not fit anymore. All of a sudden, Fuka unleashes her inner mommy and grabs Wataru's arm, flexing her talons. Taken aback, Wataru jumps in surprise like a typical maidenless man. Fuka apologizes quickly and tells Wataru that it's out of habit. The two then walk onto the sand when Fuka starts losing her footing. Wataru also notes that college-going women are truly divine beings. After arriving at the jewelry shop, Wataru sees the hot owner and Fuka exchange greetings. Seeing the two women, Wataru realizes that he has truly entered a mommy haven. The owner shows Wataru and Fuka around as Fuka reveals her desire to make a customized necklace. She turns to Wataru and asks him what he would like to make. As Wataru puts strain on his crappy brain to think about Aika and her likes, the owner asks him if it's a gift. Wataru reveals that it is for an acquaintance and Fuka learns that the acquaintance in particular is a girl. As Wataru tries hard to pick the right materials for Aika, Fuka quickly catches on. She asks Wataru if the present is for a girl he likes and Wataru admits that this is indeed the case. Smiling, Fuka tells Wataru that his girlfriend would appreciate the gesture, but Wataru quickly corrects her. He tells her that an ugly loser like him doesn't have a girlfriend, but an unrequited love like the people who are watching this video. Understanding the situation, Fuka smiles as Wataru realizes that he'll just give Aika what he thinks is the best. A picture catches his eye, and he realizes that it's a picture of Fuka in a uniform. Curious, Wataru asks Fuka if she cosplays, but the girl laughs and reveals that it's her middle school uniform. This shocks Wataru to the core as he learns that Fuka is not the mommy he had thought she was, in fact, she's a middle school student. After registering his initial shock, Wataru gets questioned by Fuka about why he's trying so hard to make a gift for someone who he has given a pawn. Wataru honestly tells her that it was thanks to Eka that he felt motivated enough to become better. Later in the bus, Fuka tells Wataru that she's looking forward to finding love in high school. 
Wataru smiles, but suddenly he receives Key's text, which consists of a pic of Eka in a swimsuit. This causes Wataru to freak out in a good way. The next day, Wataru asks the old man about what he intends to do after he will quit his part-time job. The old man of the bookstore informs him that he has already put out a word in the recruitment agency for a worker. Feeling satisfied and assured, Wataru realizes that the old man has already put a poster for an open position. It doesn't take long for the ugly version of Tuka to arrive at the bookstore. Realizing that it's his unattractive classmate Mina, Wataru inquires why a retard like her is at a bookstore. The girl hesitantly reveals that she saw a recruitment sign on the entrance and decided to apply. After learning that, Wataru goes to notify the old man who becomes extremely excited upon learning that Mina has applied. He tells Wataru how Mina is a regular at the bookstore, but Wataru finds the old man's excitement a little too sus. As the ugly boomer hires Mina on the spot, Wataru decides that it's best to put the FBI on speed dial. Later on, Wataru finds the old man's wife briefing Mina about the job. However, the conversation takes a weird turn as the grandma tells Mina that her bangs are ugly and that she will chop it for her. Right as she pulls the scissors, Wataru intervenes and saves Mina from the kind of salt. He cleverly asks Mina how does she operate with bangs that long and Mina reveals two hair clips. After sorting out her hair, Wataru realizes that this is the first time he has seen Mina's face. The next day, Wataru begins Mina's training but shudders in horror as he finds the girl shaking like she's having a drug withdrawal every time he tries to talk to her. He chalks Mina's nervousness to the fact that she's not interested in connecting with him. Things turn more worrisome for Wataru when an ugly customer tries to raise up Mina by trying to talk to her about an adult book. Wataru quickly handles the situation and sends the customer out of the door, but the damage had already been done. Seeing Mina shudder, Wataru tells Mina to go talk to the elderly wife of the old man so she can console her better. After the incident, Wataru grows worried for the future of the bookstore. He notes that communication between customers and employees are important, and since Mina sucks so bad, he goes to tell the old man that perhaps Mina isn't cut for the job. Hearing as the old man grows a little worried and sad which makes Wataru think about how nobody gives a flipping fudge about Mina at school, but here in the bookstore there's a place for her. In the end, Wataru assures the old man that he'll try and talk to Mina, but before the old man's hopes can soar high, Wataru quickly tells him not to get his hopes up too high. After finding Mina, Wataru recounts the experience with a perverted customer. He advises Mina that when such customers visit the shop, it's better to talk to them in a silly tone. He also goes on to tell Mina that while there are no right answers, there are wrong answers and she should be careful with how she deals with customers. After explaining this, Wataru formally asks Mina if she is capable enough to do this. When Mina fails to answer him, Wataru bluntly tells her if she can't do this, she's not capable for a job and she should start selling her OnlyFans pictures. Hearing Wataru, Mina kneels down and tells Wataru that she doesn't want to do that. After knowing how dedicated Mina is to earn an honest buck, Wataru quickly tells Mina to raise her head up. However, later Wataru finds himself feeling rather guilty so he turns to Eika and Ki for a bit of comfort. On the call, Eika assures Wataru that he wasn't at fault since the problem wouldn't have occurred if Mina knew how to use her mouth. After getting a free pass from Eika, Wataru ends the call which makes Eika upset as she should be the one hanging first. The next day, Wataru gets a shock as he finds Mina fired up to talk to customers. He praises Mina for her change of attitude. In response, Mina reveals that she doesn't want to sell feet pictures to the fat slobs living in their mother's basement. Understanding the situation, Wataru asks Mina why she's working in the first place and Mina reveals that she wants to become independent from her brother. She goes on to say how her brother, you has been quite a source of comfort but after he got a girlfriend, she wants to do nothing with him. Mina then explains how one day she returned home and found shoes that belonged to Yuri Yu's girlfriend. Without a second thought in her already rotten brain, Mina rushes to confront her brother but she finds her beloved older brother, smacking lips with Yuri, ready to make babies. Hearing this, Wataru gets the shock of his lifetime as if Fatso is getting more action than the protagonist himself. He also finds himself empathizing with Mina's situation, given how she has always been attached to her brother and now she can't do that because of Yu's girlfriend. Furthermore, since she had no way to release her frustration, she joined the bookstore, hoping to become independent. After an inner monologue, Wataru tells Mina that he completely understands her and wishes her good luck. The next day, Wataru finds Mina working hard so he notes to himself how a broken heart turns a person into a gym freak or a hustler. He also observes that his coordination with Mina has become quite good. With almost everything sorted, only one problem remains, communication with the customers. Unfortunately, Wataru says the last part loudly causing Mina to shudder in fear. Wataru quickly assures her that for now she can just observe him talk to customers. With that, Fuka walks in looking rather pale. However, she quickly returns to her usual happy girl self when Wataru introduces Mina to her. He also makes sure to mention that Fuka is a middle schooler, which makes Mina rather insecure about her crappy build. Seeing the two girls interact with each other, Wataru casually tells Fuka that Mina is a nerd like her. This causes Fuka to become excited as she tells Mina that most of her friends are brain 
brain-dead losers. After leaving the girls briefly to chat, Wataru observes how there aren't any customers today in the shop. He thinks that if this goes on, Mina won't be able to lose her creep fantasies, so he suggests a role play. At first, Wataru acts as a customer and asks Mina why they don't have magazines in their bookstore. Mina honestly answers by saying that she'll go ask the owner. Wataru appreciates her for coming up with a solution, however, he realizes that Mina actually went to ask the old man. Luckily, the old man is a creep, so he laughs at Wataru's clever scheme. After this, Wataru asks Fuka to act as a problematic customer. Eager to help, Fuka nails the role and Mina also faces this situation head on. After Fuka leaves and the bookstore becomes quiet, Wataru tells Mina how he will be quitting soon. This shocks and upsets Mina, but she keeps quiet and tends to her work. After getting off of work, Wataru thinks about how he will become distant from Mina once school starts. The next day at work, Mina recalls how her stupid brother brought along his tramp girlfriend and how they ate omelet together. She quickly shakes away the negative thoughts and focuses her attention on her work when Wataru compliments her for handling books with so much care. While talking to her, Wataru carelessly tells Mina how she looks better with her hair pinned. Seeing Mina's expression, Wataru notes that she's very cute. After leaving for work, Mina and Wataru find you at the entrance. As you tries to talk Mina, she hides behind Wataru, looking for some sort of safety. Seeing Mina look like a helpless rat, Wataru tells you that they should take this conversation to another place. After heading to a restaurant, you invites Yuri and the two tell Mina to quit her job. Seeing this, Wataru tells them how after their relationship began, you started neglecting her sister, causing her to feel sad. As you and Yuri heat Wataru's explanation, they agree to let Mina be independent. While watering the area near the bookstore, Wataru was greeted by the middle school beauty. He almost decides to risk everything for her, but quickly shakes his nasty and pure thoughts. Fuka arrives and brushes her hair in front of Wataru, causing him to lose his senses again. At that moment, Wataru realizes how girls are truly witches. All of a sudden, Mina arrives by the door. As Wataru sees the two girls, he analyzes the situation of how there's Fuka who is built like a Greek goddess, and then there is Mina who is the cute bully type. Finding himself between two attractive girls, Wataru realizes that he might not be blessed with cool powers like other main characters, but he sure has a good harem of women. Inside the bookstore, Mina and Fuka bond over books. Wataru observes and realizes that both of them are two very cultured women indeed. All of a sudden, his phone buzzes and he finds out that there has been an announcement about an orientation regarding the school tour. Wataru smirks as he realizes that it was nice for him to leave all the responsibilities on the nerds. Arriving home from a hard day at work, Wataru finds his ugly sister on the sofa. She tells Wataru that she knows he's looking after Yu's little sister. This surprises Wataru so much he starts choking on his words like a loser. At that moment, Kate cockily tells him to never doubt the power of a student council member. Wataru quickly changes the topic and says that she can only boss him around as an office she is a slave to her boss. Annoyed by the remark, Kate lifts up her stinky feet to repel her brother. Kate then asks Wataru to help her with the school tour, revealing that the volunteers will serve as a guide for middle schoolers and she needs plenty of others' helpers. Before he can turn her down, Kate lifts her ugly foot and wiggles her toes to scare Wataru into submission. She also tells him to fix things with Ren who is about him not joining the disciplinary and moral committee. At the moment, Wataru finds himself filled with a sense of duty towards Kate as he realizes that his sister has been working her ass off for the school and her job. He tells Kate that he'll help out in any way he can which surprises Kate. Instead of thinking that Wataru did this for her, Kate assumes that Wataru is taking this big step for Rin. As she teases Wataru on it, the loser blushes pathetically, which gives Kate great satisfaction. After this, Kate hands Wataru her phone so he can call Rin. As Rin gets a call from Wataru, she hears Kate being a mean witch to Wataru in the background. Through pain, Wataru tells Rin that he is willing to help her during the school visit tour. However, upon hearing this, Rin tells him that she doesn't need his help. This surprises Wataru who wonders if he got rejected politely. However, despite this, Wataru insists that he personally wants to help her in this time of need. Of course, Rin is deeply flattered by this, but since she is socially awkward, she tells Wataru to not say such embarrassing stuff. After calming down, Rin tells Wataru that the work evolves manual labor mostly. Seeing this as a chance to raise his senior up, Wataru tells her that for her, he'll do anything. The next day, Wataru meets up with Rin who acts all shy around her, so Wataru tells her to act like the strong, empowering feminist that she is. Rin straightens up and tells Wataru what he needs to do for the tour. Wataru dismisses this by stating that as long as he gets to flex his manliness, he's good. This makes Rin attack him like she's crazy. While walking in the hallways, Wataru spots Sasaki and Aika together. This upsets him even though Sasaki is an exact replica of him. Later on, Wataru meets up with the disciplinary and moral committee. There he's welcomed warmly by everyone. Yuvina tells everyone how Mina has been singing his praise which makes Wataru rather shy. Meanwhile, Aika fantasizes about her meet up with Wataru. It happened in middle school when he fell in front of the entire cafeteria. As everyone laughed at how pathetic he was, she decided to help him up as she saw herself in him. Ever since then, Wataru stuck to her like glue. He would go with her and follow her like a lost puppy. Seeing Wataru act like a hopeless simp, she decided to reject him brutally, knowing that an ugly beta male would never leave her side. However, during the entrance 
entrance exam period, Wataru disappeared like an F-boy in the morning. Once the results were announced, Aiko would learn that Wataru had been studying extra hard to join the same high school as her. In present time, Aiko worriedly looks for Wataru when Sasaki asks her if she's okay. As Aiko tries to mumble a response, Sasaki asks her if she misses Wataru. When Aiko struggles to answer, Sasaki walks away like a loser's second lead. While alone, Aiko admits that she misses Wataru. Without any second thoughts, Aiko scans the entire school building in search of Wataru. While running, she bumps into the man she had desperately been searching. After smiling a little, Aika tells Wataru that she noticed how hard he has been trying. This shocks Wataru as he finally gets noticed by the girl he had been pining over for years. This surprises Wataru greatly as he tries to ask Aika why she has such a sudden shift in her attitude. When Aika dodges the question like men dodge accountability, Wataru asks her why she had been in such a rush. Shyly, Aika reveals that it's because she was looking for him. Wataru yells in surprise, wondering why Aika would look for him out of all the people. After calming down, he thanks Aika for helping him solve the issue with Mina, revealing and how it helped him express his thoughts to the shy girl. Hearing this, Aika side-eyes him and asks Wataru if things got better between him and Mina. Wataru, unaware of how a woman feels, tells Aika coolly that his relationship with Mina got better. Upon learning this, Aika curtly tells him that she's glad for that. Wataru finally notices Aika's sudden change of attitude and screams internally, wondering why Aika isn't grilling him for more details. The conversation changes as Aika asks Wataru if he has saved her pick in the swimsuit where she looked fatherless. As Wataru tries to dodge the question, Aika Aika makes an attempt to grab his phone, causing her to stumble on his chest. As the couple finally has their sweet moment, Ki comes and ruins everything. After taking a seat with Ki and Aika, Wataru tells them how he's helping around because of Rin. The topic then changes to how Wataru has been helping out Mina. Aika casually tells him not to pester her, but Wataru takes it to the heart and says that he won't ever act as a fat 4chan slob anymore. To uplift the moon, Aika enthusiastically announces that they should go take a trip after all of this is over. This takes Wataru by surprise and Ki, who eventually come around. On the day of the school tour, Renji takes the mick and welcomes all the middle schoolers. Seeing the chad with perfect jawline and hair, the girls instantly find themselves bewitched. Wataru also notices the effect Renji has on girls and realizes his mouth-breathing bum could never have this type of effect. Later on, Aika and Sasaki guide the middle schoolers around the school when they ask their relationship status with Aika. Before Sasaki can be a Rizzler, Aika bluntly tells them that they're just classmates. This causes Sasaki to feel dejected, but their attention is diverted when they find a group of middle school boys bullying a beautiful guide from their school. Aika instantly steps up to help her. She also tells the losers that they are not welcome at their school. Fuka, who had also come to tour the high school, spots Wataru. She and her friends instantly greet him. Aika, who had also been near, hears Fuka praising Wataru. This upsets Aika, who drags Wataru to Ki. There, she tells Wataru that from now, he has to hang out with him. Mina makes Wataru aware that it might rain according to a forecast. In a while, it starts to rain, and Wataru asks Mina to bring in the cart from outside. As he stands outside, Wataru sees Aika approach him with quick footsteps. So he brings her inside, and Mina hands Aika a towel to dry herself. She notices that Mina has gotten a bit of change in her. That is when Wataru comes and asks her what brought her here today. Aika says that she just wanted to check up on him, followed by the question if he will keep working here. He tells her that he won't because now Mina can take care of things on her own. Meanwhile, Mina listens to them with a frown on her face. Suddenly, Fuka comes running, her clothes soaked because of the rain. She sees Aika who quickly hands her over her used towel so she can dry her clothes. After drying herself, Fuka goes to Mina and Aika asks if she comes here often. Wataru says yes, she does, and that somehow makes her mad. Aika tries to move away after hearing that but trips and falls in Wataru's arms. Being nervous, Aika stands right back up and they both can't face each other. Aika invites him to her home once again and he shows up with Ki. But what he did not expect was Aika's younger sister Eri to keep him well occupied. Later, they all sat down to drink something and Wataru thinks that Eri is much more like a younger Aika. Then Ki asks Eri if she wants a big brother and Eri says yes, making Aika nervous. Eri grabs Wataru once again to play with her. After a while, Aika's mother comes back home and now is time for Wataru and Ki to leave. Aika walks them outside and Wataru asks her about what she told her mom about him because she mentioned that Aika talked about him. As Ki leaves, Aika tells Wataru that she has made friends in high school, which was not the same as before due to her financial condition. Wataru being a nuisance for Aika became the reason that she was at least known to people but now he is her refuge. Suddenly, she hides in his arms because of the fireworks and she is scared of loud noises. Aika asks him why he doesn't call her by her first name and he has no answer for that. They start walking nervously and after a bit of struggle with emotion, they hold hands and their destination arrives. The next day, Wataru goes to school and meets Aika and she fixes his tie and he gets nervous as she was about to fix his hair as well. He turns back and says he can fix his hair by himself and after that, they begin walking together while they chat and laugh. With that, we end our video for today. Which girl do you think deserves the title of a waifu? Is it Aika, Rin, Mina, or Fuka? Let us know down and make sure to like and subscribe.